All right, this morning the LS build is going into Aikman Performance. I'm very excited to get the sucker on the dyno and see what kind of power she makes. Hey YouTube fams, Dad Who Does here. Today we're gonna to start putting everything back together in the LS engine. I'm very excited. We have painted everything that needs to be painted. We've cleaned everything that needs to be cleaned. And this sucker's ready to go. We're looking at a Gen 4 LS engine in a 2009 Chevy Silverado. And let me take you on a quick tour, show you what we're gonna get into today. And amongst my crazy pile of parts here, I took the time to paint the metal pieces in an accent yellow. I'm looking forward to seeing how it looks on the truck, but it may take some time. Additionally, over here, I painted the plastics in this crazy blue. Um, so that should also pop a little bit. You know, it's just for aesthetics. It doesn't serve any other purpose, but I just thought it would look interesting. So uh, let's get to it. Let's start with a quick tour of the engine. As you can see, we did a little accent painting here. Um, so the next steps here, we're gonna put the cam in here, put on the timing chain, timing sprocket, uh, put on the timing cover, and that's probably as far as we'll get today. Okay, the first part here is putting in the cam, and this is going to be super messy, make no mistake about it. So we're going to unbox it. It came from Texas Speed and Performance. They're actually located right here in Austin, Texas, and I went physically down to their office, their warehouse, and got to speak to some folks there and source the parts directly. Here is the part number. They told me with the specs. They told me this is a uh, stage two cam. Not really sure what that means. Stage one, stage two, stage three. Maybe somebody could tell me. But they said this is the, the best cam we can get without having to do something major. And I can't remember again what, what was that major thing that we would have to do. I don't know. So let's, uh... oh wow, it's totally sealed. My understanding is that it has a layer of some sort of uh, like a, a grease or something to keep it from rusting, and so we've actually got to clean off that layer of grease. Ooh, look at this bad boy. There we go, I'm just gonna do it right here in the box, I think. Just use this bag. And I'll be honest, I don't know a whole lot about cams. My understanding is these are called journals here. These are the cam lobes. I don't really understand all the naming convention. There's a lot of different names that for the different pieces of the cam, and so I don't I don't quite understand all that. But let's start by cleaning it off. Got myself just some uh, cheap old brake cleaner. Let's start by using that. Back the camera up here, just and also put on some eye protection. Okay, got my eye protection on. Here we go. Right. my next step here is I want to thread in some of these water pump bolts that I pulled out when I installed the water pump so let's give that a try let's see why not okay that looks good and we have with us some ARP assembly lube. I'm sure we'll use this on all the fasteners, but for now, I just want to get it nice and good and lubed up here. All right. It's definitely a good start. I'm gonna go ahead and put this in the bag for now so we're not getting lube all over everything. Just in case. Okay, and the sacrificial gloves here. Go ahead and start. Oh yeah, this looks thick. We got it all there. Yeah, we got, we got it all. Hopefully I do this right. Look at that. 
Beautiful. All right. These gloves are done. This is the old cam plate, also called thrust plate. I mean, just look at this gasket. It's all smushed down. I can run my finger across it, and I don't feel anything. I mean, this seal is dead. There's no bulge at all. Okay, here's our new one, fresh from the factory. It's got a nice indentation there. I can feel the raised bump on that one, unlike the original that came off. These need to be torqued down to 18 foot-pounds of torque. I'm just going to start it. With my impact, yes, my impact screwdriver, just to get it started. And then these need to be torqued down to 18 foot-pounds of torque. My goodness, look at all of the extensions here. What is this? Let me make sure I get this right. This is a one half to three eighths, then a three eighths to one quarter, then a one quarter to one quarter six point socket, then a socket to extension, then the extension to a T40 bit. Oh my goodness. That's a lot of adapters. And then I already set it to 18 foot pounds. All right, we got our new plate here. We can see that it's got its indicator at the bottom. So I'll go ahead and get the cam lined up. It's a three bolt, so we got a new conversion we need here. I got my new bolts, ARP. I already pre-lubricated them with some ARP assembly lube. And uh, I went online and found a reference that said to torque these to 22 foot pounds, but on the box that this part came in, it says to torque to 25 foot pounds. It's not a huge difference, but I'm gonna go with 25 foot pounds. Okay, let's get our chain on. It's pretty obvious that this has to come off. How about we get it lined up somewhat? There we go. There we go. And then we got our pre lubed 10 millimeter three bolt conversion. Do our 25 foot pounds. Good. Something so satisfying about that click. Okay, great. One of the things I find real interesting is that the old chain guide you know, had a little tensioner in it right here, and you had to put that on before putting this on. The new one is just a guide. Now, I heard that there can be a little bit of slack in these, and I mean, it's it's not coming off. There's no way. But uh, I gotta be honest, I, I like the way this one, you know, I like the idea of having a little tensioner in there, but yeah. this is what it calls for. Maybe it's better performance. All right, we got these lubed up and we'll go ahead and just put this guide on here. It's a 13 millimeter socket. Okay, great. Got a new oil pump here. It's got a high compression spring in it, high pressure spring. And my understanding is this high compression spring is supposed to be 25 PSI above the factory. Um, so that should be pretty impressive. I'm not sure why one even needs a high pressure oil pump, but we got one. So that's cool. And uh, the way that you're supposed to align it. 10 millimeter bolts have already assembly lubricant applied. So we'll just go ahead and uh, finger tighten.
Now it's time to put on the timing cover. Uh, question. It says that silicone gasket maker is good for oil pans. I'm reading this directly from the website. Valve covers, oil pans, timing covers, water pumps, thermostat housing, and transmission pan. So this is a timing cover, so why not? Go ahead and do that. I guess my question is, do I do it on one side or both sides? Should I apply this? Yeah, shoot, let's do it on both sides. Okay, I got my timing cover here. I actually put in a new oil ring already. Might end up having to loosen it up and recenter it. Because it goes on like that, right? Yeah. Yeah, it goes on like that. Okay, so I'm not sure if this is entirely necessary, but I'm going to go ahead and put a small bead of Comitex Black, which is great for. Uh, oil resistance and we're gonna make it a small bead all right here we go nuts here Do it again. All right, here we go. Wonderful. I want it to look so fresh. And for the last bolt, I'll need to use a ratcheting wrench. Okay, well that's it for today, folks. This is part of a multi-part series, so please click on the link in the description to take you to the next video in this series. We hope that you enjoyed the video, and if you got something out of this, please remember, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, that's how we make more videos. Until next time, this is Dad Who Does.